Now let us discuss gas chromatography. The principles of gas chromatography are similar to those of HPLC but the apparatus is significantly different. It exploits differences in the partition coefficients between a stationary liquid phase and a mobile gas phase of the volatilized analytes as they are carried through the column by the mobile gas phase. Its use is therefore confined to analytes that are volatile but thermally stable. The partition coefficients are inversely proportional to the volatility of the analyte so that the most volatile elutes first. The temperature of the column is raised to 50 to 300 degrees Celsius to facilitate analyte volatilization. The stationary phase consists of a high boiling point liquid material such as silicon grease or wax that is either coated onto the internal wall of the column or supported on an inert granular solid and packed into the column. There is an optimum flow rate of the mobile gas phase for maximum column efficiency. Very high resolutions are obtained, hence the technique is very useful for the analysis of complex mixtures. Gas chromatography is widely used for the qualitative and quantitative analysis of a large number of low polarity compounds because it is high sensitivity, reproducibility and speed of resolution. Analytically, it is a very powerful technique when coupled to mass spectrometry. Now let us see the different components of a gas chromatography. The major components of a gas chromatographic system are a column housed in an oven that can be temperature programmed, a sample inlet point, a carrier gas supply and control, and a detector, amplifier and data recorder system. Let us see the working of a gas chromatography. A mixed solution sample is injected into the GC system into the solvent stream. The compounds contained in the sample including the solvent components are heated and vaporized within the sample injection unit. The vaporized target components of a sample are transported into the column along with carrier gas that is our mobile phase. Once in the column, the mixture of compounds is separated into the various components. The rate of progression within the column differs depending upon the compound. Accordingly, differences arise in the times at which the respective compound arrive at the column outlet that is the elution time. As a result, a separation between each compound occurs. The amount of each compound is then measured by the detector. The detector converts the amount of each compound into an electrical signal and sends the signal to a data processing unit to produce a chromatogram. The data obtained enables determination of the compounds contained in the sample and their quantities. As you can see in the diagram, the liquid sample is injected into the column. The sample molecules along with the carrier gas mobile phase passes through the column and gets separated into its different components. And as the component eludes out of the column, a signal is produced in the form of a chromatogram. Now we'll see important steps of GC. These include the column preparation, oven temperature maintenance, introduction of the mobile phase or carrier gas, sample injection and vaporization, separation in the column and then detection. Now we'll discuss all these steps one by one. First are the columns. Two types of columns are mainly used in gas chromatography that is packed column or capillary column. Packed conventional columns. These consist of a coiled glass or stainless steel column 13 meter long and 24 millimeter internal diameter. They show low detection sensitivity. Packed columns produce broad peaks. They offer high capacity. They are packed with stationary phase coated on a support. Commonly used stationary phases include polyethylene glycols like Carbovax 20M which is very polar, methyl phenyl and methyl vinyl silicon gums like OV17 and OV101 which is medium and non-polar respectively, epizin L which is non-polar and esters of adipic, succinic and phthalic acids. So to sum up, Packed column usually contains liquid stationary phase coated onto the solid support which is packed into the tube made up of stainless steel or glass. Capillary or open tubular columns. These are made of high quality fused quads and are 10 to 100 meter long and 0.1 to 1 millimeter internal diameter. They show high detection sensitivity. 
Sharper peaks provide better separation in short time. Liquid or solid particles are attached directly to the column. They are of three types. First is the wall coated open tubular or WCOT. A thin layer of liquid stationary phase is coated about 0.15 mm thick directly onto the walls of the capillary. Commonly used stationary phases include polyethylene glycol which is very polar and methyl and phenyl polysiloxanes which are non-polar or medium polar. Next is the porous layer open tubular column or plot. Porous solid stationary phase such as alumina, silica gel or molecular sieves is attached to the capillaries inner wall as you can see in the diagram. Then support coated open tubular or scot. The support matrix is bonded to the walls of the capillary column and the liquid stationary phase is coated onto the support. The capacity of scot columns is considerably higher than the wall coated open tubular columns. Oven temperature. The operating temperature for all types of column must be compatible with the stationary phase chosen for use. Too high a temperature results in excessive column bleed owing to the phase being volatized off, contaminating the detector and giving an unstable recorder baseline. The working temperature range is chosen to give a balance between peak retention time and resolution. Analyte partition coefficients are particularly sensitive to temperature so that analysis times may be regulated by adjustment of the column oven which can be operated in one of two modes. First is isothermal analysis. Here a constant temperature is employed. Temperature programming. The temperature is gradually increased to facilitate the separation of compounds of widely differing polarity or molecular weight. Mobile phase or carrier gas. The mobile phase consists of an inert gas such as nitrogen for packed columns, helium or argon for capillary columns. The gas from a cylinder is pre-purified by passing through a variety of molecular sieves to remove impurities like oxygen, hydrocarbons and water vapor which may degrade stationary phase. It is then passed through the chromatographic column at a flow rate of 40 to 80 cm cube per minute. A gas flow controller is used to ensure a constant flow irrespective of the back pressure and the temperature of the column. Hydrogen and helium give better resolution than nitrogen at high flow rates because solutes diffuse more rapidly through hydrogen and helium than through nitrogen. Helium is the most compatible gas because it is more compatible with all detectors. Hydrogen has a drawback that it can catalytically react with unsaturated compounds on metal surfaces. It also forms explosive mixtures with air when hydrogen concentration is more than 4%. The next step is sample injection and vaporization. The majority of known and low polar compounds are directly amenable to gas chromatography but other compounds possessing such polar groups such as hydroxyl, amine and carboxyl group are generally retained on the column for excessive periods of time if they are applied directly. The test sample is dissolved in a suitable solvent such as acetone, heptane or methanol. Chlorinated organic solvents are generally avoided as they contaminate the detector. Samples can be injected by using one of the following injectors. A heated GC injector port or a split splitless injector. A heated GC injector port. For packed columns, the sample is injected onto the column using a micro syringe through a septum in the injection port attached to the top of the column as you can see in the diagram. A small amount of liquid sample to be analyzed is drawn up into the syringe. The syringe needle is positioned in the hot injection port of the gas chromatograph and the sample is injected quickly. The needle from the syringe pierces a rubber septum and enters into the top of the column which is located within a heater block. The injection of the sample is considered to be a point in time that is it is assumed that the entire sample enters the gas chromatograph at the same time so the sample must be injected quickly. The temperature is set to be higher than the boiling points of the components of the mixture so that the components will vaporize. The vaporized components then mix with the inert gas mobile phase which is carried to the gas chromatographic column for separation. Another injector system is a split splitless injector. 
because the capillary column's volume is significantly smaller than that for a packed column, it requires a different style of injector to avoid overloading the column with sample. The needle pierces a rubber septum and enters into a glass liner which is located within a heater block. In a split injection, the split vent is open. The split vent is closed for a splitless injection. A splitter system has to be used at the sample injection port so that only a small fraction of the injected sample reaches the capillary column. Next step is the separation in the column. Components in the mixture are separated based on their abilities to absorb on or bind to the stationary phase. A component that absorbs more strongly to the stationary phase will spend the most time in the column that is it will be retained in the column for a longest time and will therefore have the longest retention time. It will emerge from the gas chromatograph last. Whereas a component that absorbs least strongly to the stationary phase will spend the least time in the column that is it will be retained in the column for the shortest time and will therefore have the shortest retention time. It will emerge from the gas chromatograph first. Detectors. The components of the mixture reach the detector at different times due to differences in the time they are retained in the column. The detector then sends a signal to the chart recorder which results in a peak on the chart paper. The component that is retained the shortest time in the column is detected and recorded first. The component that is retained the longest time in the column is detected and recorded last. Several types of detectors are in common use in conjugation with gas chromatography, one of them being flame ionization detector. It typically uses a hydrogen or air flame into which the sample analyte is passed to break down organic molecules and produce electrically charged particles that is ions. The ions are collected and produce an electrical signal which is then measured. The current is proportional to the rate of ion formation which depends on the hydrocarbon concentration in the gases and is detected by a suitable electrometer and displayed on an analog output. Now let us see the applications of gas chromatography. GC analysis is used to calculate the content of a chemical product for example in assuring the quality of products in the chemical industry or measuring toxic substances in soil, air or water. Gas chromatography is used in the analysis of airborne pollutants, performance enhancing drugs in athletes' urine samples, oil spills and essential oils in perfume preparation. GC is very accurate if used properly and can measure picomolecules of a substance in a 1 ml liquid sample or parts per billion concentrations in gaseous samples. Gas chromatography is used extensively in forensic sciences. Disciplines as diverse as solid drug dose identification and quantification, arson investigation, paint chip analysis and toxicology cases employ GC to identify and quantify various biological specimens and crime scene evidence. Now let us see the advantages and limitations of gas chromatography. Advantages includes the use of longer columns and higher velocity of carrier gas permits the fast separation in a matter of few minutes. Higher working temperatures up to 500 degrees Celsius and the possibility of converting any material into volatile component make gas chromatography one of the most versatile techniques. Gas chromatography is popular for environmental monitoring and industrial applications because it is very reliable and can be run nearly continuously. It is typically used in applications where small volatile molecules are detected and with non-aqueous solutions. It is favored for non-polar molecules. Limitations include that compounds to be analyzed should be stable under GC operation conditions. They should have a vapor pressure significantly greater than zero. Typically, the compounds analyzed are less than 1000 Dalton because it is difficult to vaporize larger compounds. The samples are also required to be salt free, they should not contain ions. Very minute amounts of a substance can be measured, but it is often required that the sample must be measured in comparison to a sample containing the pure suspected substance known as a reference standard.